welcome to part five of AP Psychology, looking at consciousness, and this last part we're going to look at different types of drugs. We're going to go rather quickly through it so that this isn't like a 500 minute video. So here we go. First uh, classification of drugs that we're going to look at are called a depressants. Now a depressant uh, reduces neural activity, right? It depresses it, right? So you press it down, depresses it. Um, and it slows, slows body functions. So basically think of all things that your body does, depressants slow all that down. Your, your ability to problem solve, your ability to think, your reaction time, um, any, anything that your body needs its nervous system to do, depressants slow that down. Some types of depressants, examples are alcohol, um, alcohol is uh, a depressant and alcohol is you know, a bit controversial because alcohol in moderate amounts are shown to be beneficial in most cases so they can be they can help be healthy but oftentimes alcohol especially for uh, teenagers and uh, young 20 year olds um, can be uh, detrimental because you can over consume right binge drink and so right alcohol some some negatives that are associated with it is that it produces disinhibition, slow neural processing, memory disruption, reduces self-awareness, and it also has these things called expectancy effects. Expectancy effects, when you take alcohol, um, you expect it to, you know, do that disinhibition. You expect yourself to act silly. There's actually research done where they pretended to give college students alcohol. They they gave college students actually non-alcoholic beer, but they told them, you know, it was regular beer, and the students acted like they were drunk, right? They acted full out like they were drunk because they thought they were getting uh, alcohol. So that's an expectancy effect, like we've talked about before. And so alcohol is something you just need to be careful with. In moderate amounts, when it's uh, legal, it's it's it can be healthy, but uh, without that, it can turn into a definite depressant, and right, depressants uh, slow everything down. In your bias, which is a huge reason why you never drink and drive, because your reaction time when you're driving, especially at high speeds, is uh, fractions of seconds anyway. And so, if that's reduced, that's when crashes and deaths occur. Um, another one uh, that we need to talk about is called barbiturates. Barbiturates are often prescribed medicines that um, reduce anxiety, so they reduce anxiety. They're like tranquilizers. So, Membutol, Secanol, Amatol, these are types of uh, barbiturates. Um, they reduce anxiety, so like if you get nervous and whatnot, your doctor may prescribe a barbiturate to you. The problem or a negative of a barbiturate is that it impairs, you know, impairs your memory, just like alcohol, and it also impairs your judgment. Um, meant. And so, right, you have to be careful when you're taking barbiturates and driving, operating heavy machinery, right? You always read those things when you take medications. Don't drive or operate heavy machinery because uh, your reaction times when taking anything that says depressant goes down. Um, finally, uh, a depressant is an opiate. An opiate is anything that derives from the opium plant. And uh, examples here are morphine and uh, heroin. Um, and so what happens with opiates is that your brain stops producing naturally occurring opiates. Um, so naturally occurring opiates and then it, so it stops producing naturally occurring opiates. I'm not going to write all that. But it temporarily lessens pain and anxiety. Um, so it temporarily lessens pain and anxiety. This is why sometimes if you get in a really bad accident or you go to the hospital um, for uh, surgery or, or whatnot, you might get uh, morphine injections, right? Because it temporarily releases that pain. Um, opiates are very highly addictive. You can become addicted to them fairly easily. That doesn't mean, though, if you get shot up with morphine once, you're going to be um, addicted to it. It just means that you're more easily likely addicted to it. Um, so... Yeah, that's your opiates, right? So all the depressants. Now the opposite is a stimulant, and a stimulant um, excites neural activity, so it's the opposite. 
Um, it speeds up your body functions, right? So different drugs, amphetamines are types of stimulants. Amphetamines are um, anything that speed, speeds up. So caffeine would be a, would be a, am, I'm sorry, amphetamines is a more powerful type of stimulant. I was gonna talk about caffeine here, but amphetamine is more powerful than caffeine. Uh, amphetamine would be more like cocaine and ecstasy, which we'll talk about down here. We'll talk about both these actually. Um, they're very powerful stimulants and they can um, become, they're high, more highly addictive as well. Uh, methamphetamine is uh, chemically produced amphetamines. Um, this is your speed or your crystal meth. Um, very highly addictive with this, these ones. Um, and they would re reduce your body's naturally recurring dopamine Right. Remember your neurotransmitters. Dopamine is one of your pleasure neurotransmitters. Um, reduces your body's naturally occurring dopamine so that when you go off of the meth, you get depressed. And so you oftentimes see people, you know, who try to, to try to quit speed or crystal meth, and they're depressed, and so they get back on it because they hate the way they feel because your body's not producing dopamine anymore because you got crap load of dopamine when you were taking the drug. Um, caffeine is uh, the world's most highly um, used drug, right? Caffeine's in tons of stuff. It's a stimulant. It um, speeds everything up, right? It speeds your cognitive functions. Why so many millions of people around the world drink coffee in the morning because they need to speed their process, get their day going. Um, another example of a stimulant is nicotine. Um, nicotine and cigarettes, right? So a lot of stuff with nicotine and uh, you know you gotta be aware of it um, teen to grave smokers right so if you start smoking when you're a teen which is when most people start to smoke right if you make it past to college without smoking pretty much a zero percent chance you're gonna start and so the, uh, cigarette companies know this and so they market right try to they try to market very savvily to teenagers and uh, preteens and so you usually start when you're in your preteens or teenage years to smoke and if you've made it past that you're probably not gonna start um, but uh, there's about 8 million deaths a year due to uh, smoking. Or there'll be about 8 million in the year 2030. Now there's you know a little bit less than that, but it keeps increasing because third world countries are starting to smoke. Um, so why do people smoke? Um, so smoking, you know, is a social reward, right? You fit in with a crowd when you smoke. You seem a little bit cooler, and I'm not, and you um, you know just get might be more accepted. It makes you feel older. It's uh, you see movie stars smoking on the movies, and you you know you just you feel like it's uh, going to help you um, change your image, right? So these are some of the you know psychological reasons. And then when you actually smoke, right, you've also got a drug, the nicotine, in there, and the nicotine is reinforcing, right? It delivers a hit within about seven seconds. So seven seconds after you take that uh, drag from your cigarette, you're getting a rush of nicotine, and you're feeling it immediately. So it's reinforcing. Right. Um, remember the conditioning, the learning uh, unit, and so not only is it psychologically uh, beneficial for some people, but it's also you know becomes uh, addictive because of the nicotine, and so you go off of it, and you don't. It um, reduces anxiety and stuff like that as well. And then finally, we're going to look at ecstasy. Ecstasy um, blocks serotonin reuptake. So again, serotonin is also one of your pleasure um, neurotransmitters and it blocks the reuptake of that so right remember when the neurotransmitters get released they hang out in the synaptic uh, gap for a while and then they get sucked back in if they don't get accepted onto the other uh, axon well ecstasy blocks the reuptake so there's a ton of serotonin just hanging out there and then you get this you know three to four hour um, feel good vibe going on um, and so that's the you know the positive effects of ecstasy, um, some, some things to be careful of with ecstasy and, and worry about is that it's a big time uh, diuretic, it's cause you to be dehydration. A lot of times you take ecstasy, it right, became really popular in the 90s with raves and dances. And so people would dance and be in these rooms um, dancing with all these people where it's hot and they're sweating and they die of dehydration from the ecstasy because they didn't drink enough water. Another, if you continue to use it and use it, uh, tons of it, you can um, lower your naturally occurring serotonin, which again, that's the depression, that's the lack of feeling good. It suppresses your immune system and also impairs your memory. So some things to be careful of with that. 
Um, one of the big um, stimulants is cocaine, right? Cocaine is an amphetamine. Um, here's just like a description of kind of what's going on with the cocaine. So you get your neurotransmitters, they carry the messages, and so these are all these little green dots are little neurotransmitters, and this is the synaptic um, gap right here. Um, and so it reabsorbs excess, but cocaine does the same thing, and it blocks it blocks the reabsorption of, of dopamine, whereas um, the other one was serotonin. So dopamine gets blocked, and then it stays in here, and it feels great. Um, so you feel really good, um, but cocaine actually can block serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. So it, it takes all of them out of there. So this, you feel really good because you get all the pleasure-seeking neurotransmitters just kicking out. And then uh, you know when you stop, though, if you if you continue to use cocaine, it can uh, deplete your body's natural current. Another category of drugs here is hallucinogens. Hallucinogens um, distort perceptions, and um, they evoke sensory images. Oops, got an S in there. Sensory images without input. So without sensory input. So you're seeing stuff and there's nothing coming in to see. So that's, you know, hallucinate. You hallucinate. It's where the word hallucinate comes from, hallucinogens. Um, LSD is a very uh, popular uh, hallucinogen, acid. Um, the thing with uh, LSD and hallucinogens is that when you start to hallucinate, they can be very emotional. Um, they can, but they can range from, you know, euphoria to where just extreme excitement, happiness, uh, relaxation, detachment, you can just feel completely at ease. You can also feel panicked and um, depressed also because these, these emotions that you feel are very real but they don't have any sensory um, input. And then um, marijuana is a bit of a, of a depressant and a hallucinogen. So it's a depressant and a hallucinogen. And um, the key ingredient, right, in marijuana is THC. And THC, right, has been shown to have some clinically beneficial um, aspects to it. This is why some states are allowing legalized marijuana. Um, smoking marijuana, however, right, is uh, very similar to smoking a cigarette. You can get cancer and the same bad things that can happen with smoking can happen with smoking marijuana. So people who... Um, THC has been found to bind to the receptor sites to kind of like morphine, right? The morphine binds uh, to the receptor sites and blocks this uh, and, you know, acts as an agonist for pain reduction. And um, sometimes the THC in the marijuana can do the same thing. And so some people for like their nausea or um, pain or even sometimes severe weight loss that's associated with AIDS, People might use marijuana or use THC. Doctors recommend, you know, that you inhale the THC just from a special machine. Just get straight THC uh, for that so you avoid the pitfalls of actually smoking. Um, but so marijuana can be, you know, has some positive effects as well. And you can also uh, hallucinate with marijuana um, as well. One thing about all hallucinogens is that they usually, you know, you... Most people hallucinate in the same uh, fashion. Um, so it all starts with these uh, simple geometric forms, like you see spider webs or these geometric shapes, and then you get go to the next stage with some more meaningful images. Um, you might be those might be superimposed like a ton. A lot of people who hallucinate see like like a tunnel, like the light at the end of a tunnel, like the near, sort of like a near death experience, um, and then they might replay past emotional events in their lives. And then finally, the last stage is kind of separation from your body, uh, a dreamlike stage, and it's become really real. Like it feels so real to you, and so you can start panicking. You might even hurt yourself during this, and so you know there's some definitely some negative effects to uh, hallucinogens and that sort of thing. So uh, all these drugs, right? Um, they, you know, they chemically are changing the way your body naturally um, works, and so become aware of why they do that and how they do that and you'll be a more uh, informed human being.